What's up guys, TV here, one, two, and two, and it's list day. Ah yes, yeah, list day. And this is the third time I've recorded this video because it's long and I ramble too much and I'm literally doing it again. And today we're looking at the top 10 underrepresented attribute type combos in Yu-Gi-Oh! What the hell do I mean by that? Well, in Yu-Gi-Oh! every monster has an attribute and a type. Like, Blue Eyes White Dragon here is a light dragon. And because Konami likes to be organized, I guess, a lot of attributes tend to contain certain types. Like, fish tend to be water attribute, because they're fish. Duh. And because of that, there are certain combinations of attribute and type that just don't really happen. Before we get started, I just want to give a big shout out to Ryan. Make sure you like the video and comment down below that Ryan, despite being a goblin, is a wonderful man. Because he does a lot of the background stuff for the channel, like running the Discord and the Patreon and the T-Search sales and all that other hoo-ha. When he came to me with a giant spreadsheet of all of the information required to make this list and said, hey, can you make this video? I said, absolutely, man. I might make the content, but he makes it a community. So big shout out to Ryan. I also want to say we're going to ignore Divine and Divine Beast and Creator God because those are stupid. The list, the, the list would be 10 entries of just some of those combinations. That would be stupid. It'd be a bad video. We, I'm, I'm sure we all can handle that. And without further ado, uh, let's get started. Remember when I mentioned that water attribute? Oh yeah, it bogarts like half the types in this game. So those are half this list. <laughs> sea Serpent Light Combo. Given the fact that like light is one of the most supported attributes in our game, you would think there'd just be, by law of averages, a lot of light sea serpents. But nah, there's only two. Out of the total sea serpents, it's only 2.53%. Actually, that percentage out of total of type is, like, is, is how we ordered the list and broke ties and things like that. For the record, the two light sea serpent monsters we have are Light Ray Daedalus, a level seven monster that lets you special summon it from your hand if you have four or more light monsters in your graveyard that then allows you to pop a field spell and then two other cards. It's okay. And Kaiser Seahorse, one of those weird level fours that count as two tributes for a tribute summon of their same attribute. In this case, light. Kaiba's tribute summoning this for Blue Eyes White Dragon. <laughs> Kaiser Seahorse stats are pretty good though. That's a plus. All right, number nine, continuing the water train, Fish Dark. Again, by that same logic, we have tons of dark monsters in this game. So you'd think that just by law of averages, there'd be some dark fish. Nah, fish are all water. Again, only two of them. And out of total fish, that is 1.8%. We got Earthbound Immortal. I'm not even going to attempt to pronounce it. Ah, hell, why not? Kachu Kalua. Kalua. Kalua? Kalua. A level 10 that has a menagerie of effects, all of them bad. <laughs> you can only control one Earthbound Immortal. If there's no field spell on the field, it blows itself up. Your opponent can't attack it. It can attack directly. Once per turn, you can burn your opponent for half this thing's current defense points. By stock, that is 1,200. It can't attack if you did that. And if it's in defense mode, your opponent can't connect their battle phase, which is a weirdly uh, redundant effect. I mean, I guess it helps all your other monsters, but probably tribute some of this thing. <laughs> you don't have other monsters. And the other one is Shark Fortress, a rank 5 XC monster. <laughs> At least it's summonable. Your opponent cannot target other monsters except this one for attacks, which now that I realize it is a, a weird theming between these dark fish. That's strange. <laughs> Once per turn, you can detach from it to, uh, what, make a guy on your field attack twice? Yes! Yes. Dark fish, everybody. Spoiler alert. <laughs> More fish. Number eight's wind fish. Ah, yes, the wind fish. The windfish is a whale, man. Why? They come out of Yoshi egg. That's all kinds of wrong. We got flying fish because, because yeah. And fly fang, a another flying fish. I guess if you have a wind fish combo, it would just be a bunch of flying fish, right? When it works, it works. Well, flying fish is a vanilla monster and it's real, real bad. Level four with like under a thousand attack and defense. 800, 500. <laughs> Why? Why? Stop Around. What am I even looking at? You get three wishes if you see it flying, though. All three are gonna be, I wish the card didn't exist. Ladies and gentlemen, we got him. The other one's Fly Fang, a level four from that Banished Fish deck, which, because that's coming from a deck that actually has a name, you'd think there'd be more wind fish to go with it, but apparently not. 1600 attack, 300 defense, it does piercing, and if it does battle damage at the end of the battle phase, it banishes itself until your standby phase, presumably so you can do shenanigans with it, with that stupid deck. It's okay. I got a fever, and the cure is more fish. Fish Earth! Now, if you told me there was no fish earth types, 
because a fish in an earth doesn't make any freaking sense, I would have been like, you know what? You're probably right. Nah, but there are two. There's actually somehow two. Soul Eater. Yes, that the anime Soul Eater is. <laughs> Police stinger! Oh, I gotta now. I gotta figure out and post if if I actually remember the name of that anime properly because I have never watched it. And Scrap Shark. And now that you say it, I'm like, yeah, duh, Scrap Shark. I forgot about that one. Soul Eater is another bad vanilla. Better than Flying Fish, though. Still not great for a level four. We got like Giant Soldier of Stone in the first set of the game, and he was a level three with 13 2,000. So. There is no excuse, Soul Eater. And Scrap Shark's a, a level four with 2100 attack, which is uh, pretty big actually. But if your opponent activates like any effect whatsoever, it just murders itself. <laughs> and if this thing is destroyed by the effect of a scrap card and uh, sent to the graveyard, you can mill a scrap monster from your deck to the graveyard, which uh, its first effect does uh, count as its own activation condition. So there's at least some benefit there to have it blow itself up, I guess. Taking a break from fish, because water just hogs all the fish, is Pyro Dark. Now see, this one surprised me, because again, tons of dark monsters, and a Pyro Dark? That sounds like, you know, Hellfire. That's cool, right? Nah, there's, no, there's only two of them, which is 1.68% of the total Pyro monsters in the game. And they're both Evil Swarms, believe it or not. Evil Swarm O-Lantern, a level four with obnoxious 1650, 1250, 1250, which has the ignition effect to allow you to tribute this thing to pop a monster your opponent controls. It's okay. The other one is Evil Swarm Obliv'l Wisp. Obliv'l Wisp. What in oblivion is that? The most evil thing about these evil swarms is all them 50s in their stats. So you can't do life points in your head so well. After damage calculation, if this card battles a monster, negate the effects of that monster, including in the graveyard. That's actually a really, really good effect on a monster with no attack power. <laughs> Feels bad, man. Five weird combos. Sea Serpent Fire. There's one. Can you guess which one it is? This one might be one you actually might be able to say off the top of your head. Good old Bandy Boy, Lavaval Chain. Yeah, that thing's a sea serpent for whatever reason. 1.27% of all sea serpents, they're all water. This one's literally the opposite. Rank 4 Sea Monster, 18 1000, decent stats, with two bomb ass effects I wish we could have in this game. Once per turn, you can detach a material from this card to pick one of these two effects. Send one card from your deck to the graveyard. That's anything, spell trap or monster. Uh, or choose a monster from your deck and put it on the top of your deck. One of my favorite combos with this card was when I first got back into the game. It was like that right in the middle of the XC era there. I was playing a spirit XC deck. Nikitama, Aratama, special summon the, the one spirit that you need like a, he's like a level six or whatever. Uh, Lavoval Chain, detach the Nikitama to top deck Black Luster Soldier. Nikitama would activate and let you draw the Black Luster Soldier immediately. That was fun. But yeah, uh, we're just filling time because there's only one combo. Number four is more of our Sea serpent -y boys. Sea Serpent Earth. Again, there's only one and it makes sense because the Sea Serpents in Earth doesn't seem to make a lot of sense. It's a Subterror. Subterror Behemoth Stigocrack, Stigocracken, Stig... Stig... Stigmata Kraken. Can I show you these and you can tell me what you think? Yes. Stygo Kraken. Stygo Kraken? Like most of the Subterra monsters, the flip effect, when it's flipped, you can uh, blow up set cards on the field equal to the number of Subterra behemoths you, you can currently control. Uh, cool. If a monster is flipped face down, you can special summon it from your hand. And once per turn, you can use its effect to flip itself back face down. It's a Subterra. Back at it with the fish. Fish light. Yeah, this one really surprised me. I was like, there's only one fish light monster, really? And it's golden flying fish. It's just a bunch of flying freaking fish. And there's no sight, there's no Level 4, 1700, uh, 1000 defense, nice. You contribute one other fish type monster you control to destroy one card in the field. That's uh, okay. If it could contribute itself, that'd be nice. But as it stands, it's kind of booty. Seriously, how is there only one light fish? They're all water. What a type hog. Number two. Number two. Number two is Thunder Fire, which sounds like a rad combo. There's only one. <laughs> oh, and it's a new one actually. 
Magic Key Fiend Transferal Mine. Transferal Mine. I'm not actually, I don't think I'm mispronouncing that. Transferal Mine. Oh, that is, that is not a word. Level 8 Synchro, 2800 attack and defense. Not bad. Made of one Magic Key Tuner and one or more normal monsters. Interesting. This is the first time me reading this because I haven't gotten this far in my two previous recordings. <laughs> What does this thing do? This thing can make up the two attacks on monsters during one battle phase. Uh, with 2,800 attack, that's that's actually pretty threatening. You can only use each of the next two effects of this thing once per turn. If you control this synchro summon monster that was synchro summoned using two or more attributes for its material, you can set one magic key spell or trap from your deck to the field. Neat! It searches your spells and traps for your deck. Seems pretty okay to me. And the other effect is if your opponent normal or special summons a monster with the same attribute as a monster in your graveyard, you can destroy that monster. Monster. Hmm, neat. Now we're gonna play, can Dave figure out why it's good? I've literally never read any of the cards in this archetype, so I'm assuming they must play with normal monsters and they're probably all different attributes or have a way of changing their attributes, which can then uh, set up this card as a uh, control boss monster. But yeah, he's the only thunder fire monster. So there's that. All right, we don't have any honorable mentions because given the nature of this list, that doesn't make any sense. So instead, our honorable mention is your playmat. Use my promo code shown here and you get a discount on your custom card sleeves. I really love the idea of having custom card sleeves because like everybody's got like pro mats or whatever. So it's kind of cool to roll up to an event now that they're opening back up with a little extra spice on your deck. And remember guys, you could always just like slap one of the meta deck monsters on the sleeve so that like people think you're playing that and then you can just be like, nah, I'm actually playing this and totally take them by surprise in game one. <laughs> it's, it's big brain. And for number one with absolutely no monsters in existence that have this type combination. Get excited. Are Pyro Water and Fish Fire. They're almost the exact opposite. Why couldn't it have been Aqua Fire? You were this close. You're on the verge of greatness. We were this close. Now the Pyro Water makes a hell of a lot of sense because uh, that combination's stupid. And Fish Fire, you know what? I am, I am actually surprised we do not have a Fish Fire. We got Light Fish, we got Blue Fish, we got dark fish, but no fire, fire fish. Again, it's a flaming fish, so, so that's just dinner, I suppose. But uh, no, there's no magical elemental fire fish. Anyway, guys, that was the list. I hope you enjoyed it. It's at least academically interesting. <laughs> most of the monsters certainly were not. And join us next week. Uh, maybe we'll do maybe we'll do the most represented of each one uh, if this gets enough likes. That'd be cool, right? So remember guys, if you don't troll the meta who will, I will see you guys next time. Just a quick special thank you to all my supporters over on Patreon. You guys make the whole channel possible. You guys have no idea how much it means to me that you guys do that. If you guys want to be part of the Goblet Attack Force, link for the Patreon down in the description below. Heh, <laughs> clicking the subscribe button's a good move. I guess there's a first time for everything. Feel free to click on these third-rate videos from a fourth-rate Yugi tuber. But I don't have time for such amateurs. Come on, Mokuba. Let's go get ice cream. <laughs>